Welcome back to Site Tech Inner Mountain. In this video, we're going to cover both SiteWorks and Earthworks. What I've got here laid out today is a house footprint. As you can see, the feathers that are out on the ground here. I want to show you a situation where you've got to go and as built the corners of a house that's been laid out by someone else, but you want to plug it into your Earthworks machine. I'm going to make a handful of uh, videos that show you different ways to do just this one house print right here. In this video, what I'm going to do is actually show you how to go around with your SiteWorks rover and record existing points that have already been put on the ground as feature points. And then we're going to export that measured data to the Earthworks machine that I've got here. And then I'm going to infill design using those points and create my infill design and go ahead and load it. And what we're going to do to start off is use my benchmark that's been set over here. This I will use for um, actually setting up the job site itself, my one point calibration, and I'll use that as the 100. So what I'm going to do is set up on this benchmark right here that's been provided to me, level up. Then we're going to go ahead and start a brand new project. I'm going to call this the uh, house layout points US survey feet point northern easting not worried about all this the intent of these videos is to show you how to actually infill design all this if you're not given the CSV file or given any information from the engineer but you've got technology so no control point nothing here gonna hit finish I am gonna give it an actual work order that'll show up inside the machine it'll make more sense when I do that so we'll call this the uh, house points and then finish. And I do not have a design. So it's just project house points for a work order. Hit accept. I've already got my rover um, bouncing off of a base station running on channel one. So what I'm going to do is go to my menu, go to project setup and go down to project calibration. Now, since there's not more than two control points that have been actually entered into this, which I don't have any, it automatically assumes, as it says there at the top, a no control point calibration. I call it a one point. So I'm going to dummy in these numbers. I have a habit of doing 5,000, 1,000, and then since I do know this is my 100 elevation right here on this stake, I'm going to go ahead and put in 100 right there, and I'm going to measure it. This will look just like if you're doing a normal calibration, bottom a quick release, and 6.562. We'll let it go for 15 seconds. This is generating a calibration so that once we're done shooting all these points over here as feature points, they're just points, no line strings. I'm going to put that inside the excavator and use those as points um, as if I had recorded them with the machine. And then we're going to infill design, but the machine itself requires the calibration. So now that I'm done, I can zoom in on where I'm at. We are good to go. I'm going to leave my legs over here. I have a habit of not taking those with me when I'm not doing anything that requires me to hold this that still. So all I'm going to do with that work order that I created is I'm going to start with any points that I want. It doesn't really matter, but it does kind of help if you do it in an order, if you will. Um, so I'm going to go to my measure type, which is the roller stuck in the mud. I'm going to go to points, and I'm going to call it building corner. And it'll subsequently after that be building corner one, two, three, four. So I'm going to change this from a surface to a feature, and I'm going to change the show every time to no. I'm just going to go ahead and one by one go through here and actually record these points. And if you want to turn on the point name so you can see them, you can turn on point name right there in the gear. This line itself represents center line of footing is what I've been told so it's not outside a wall outside of footing inside or anything it's the actual center line okay so now that I've got all those points recorded out there you can see a whole bunch of them I basically gathered the perimeter outline and in order. So now we will take my rover over here and jump in the machine. 
Okay, now that we're in the machine, what I've got is I've got my thumb drive inserted into the data collector. What I'm going to do is go down to, I'm going to go to the menu, I'm going to go down to data management, and I'm going to go down to export to machine. Right off the bat, I'm going to change the top one to measured points. I'm going to send it to Earthworks, and then I've got my work order that I started out called house points. Going to go ahead and hit accept, and it's going to write that to the thumb drive here, the USB drive. Data was, su was saved successfully, so we're okay there. So now we can just go ahead and put the thumb drive inside the actual device here, the TD520 inside the machine. And it will automatically prompt us with an import option. I'm going to import files to the machine from the USB. Hit next. I'm going to go to my thumb drive itself and then hit select in the bottom right. What it's going to do is it's going to bring in a project that's in here, anything that I've got in here. And if I drop that down, you can see that it's going to bring in house layout points. So we'll import that in. Once that's imported in, you can go ahead and hit OK. And on your job setup here, you can go to job setup. You can go and find that project now. So now I've got house layout points as an actual project. In here under design, I have no design as you can see. That's why it's giving me the error for design. That's okay. We're going to change this to infield design. And I'm going to go ahead and hit this black box next to design. I'm going to create a design and I'm going to go alignment and section. So in alignment and section, instead of doing the focus point, which we usually do when we're doing alignment or uh, the infield design, I'm going to select points right here. Now what I can do for points is start out with hitting the little plus symbol. And you can see all the points that showed up in there that I have. Now what you can do is you can systematically go right through here in order. So building corner, I'm going to hit select. And then I'm going to just systematically go through this process and hit each one in order. And as you do this, you can start seeing your alignment take place. There you go. So now that I've gotten to the very last one, what you can do to close it out is go back and hit the very first one again to actually close out that boundary. So now as you zoom in, you can see all of this uh, all the way around. I just went point by point, made my alignment all the way around. You can go to the elevation right here. What you can do is let's say this footing needed to be one elevation all the way across. You can see that the elevation that it picked for the first one is 9930. Let's say that the footing for that, knowing that the top of the foundation is 100, let's say that we needed to be four feet below that. So we'll go ahead and go in 96. So I'm going to put that at 96 point even on that one. Then what I'm going to do is come down. Oh, that was that last one there. Then what I'm going to do is come down and tap this one here and put that one at a 96 point even also. And now what I can do is in between these, you can see if I zoom out, both the two ends are at that elevation. I can hit this button right here and actually auto level everything out to 96 even. So four feet below the 100. So that's step one of three. Now what I can do is hit next and go to step two. And on screen, I'm going to set the width of this footing. So I'm going to just go four feet, but I want a center line because my line was center of the footing. So I want to make sure this stays at center. So the way you do that is you hit plus and right here you type in a two 
two feet over, so it makes a two feet. You can drag this also. So I make a center line of my four foot trench. What I do then is hit two feet again. And as you can see here, I've got four feet over from the zero line. What I'm gonna do on the next screen is I'm gonna move that over. So what I do is zoom down and you can see that right now it would be the inside of all that. If I hit this little arrow at the bottom here, I can center myself over that footing right there to make my alignment out there match the center here, two foot wide footing. Now I can go here and call it the uh, house footing. Hit done. I don't need to extend it. I hit apply. It's all the same elevation. Then what I can do is if I have steps in the footing, like I do over here on this one corner, I can just change that in my vertical offset. I don't have to try to model that in. So I've got an alignment section, house footing. I'm going to come out here and go ahead and hit apply. And now I can go to the main screen, see what it looks like, hit start, and change the screen to match what I need it to. And there you go. If you zoom it around in 3D, you can see all those points out there. And uh, then you can see the actual alignment all the way around. Got a good, nice footing. I can zoom down and look at it flat. Looks really good. It didn't double back over on itself. And what I can do now is change it to this screen so I can kind of view what's going on around me. And then on the cross section there, now what we can do is go ahead and move over and check the footing itself. So if I sit right about on the middle there, there you go. Here's another little trick to help you out with this, is what you can do if you want to make sure that your dead nut's right in the middle of that footing, is since I do have a line in the middle, I can go to horizontal offset here, and I can come in here, and I can zoom down in and pick the center alignment, leave it at zero on the offset, and then on the bottom ribbon here, I can change it to this offline. So if I touch and hold on this and go to ribbon to adjust it, I can turn, put offline in the middle there, move elevation out of there. And what offline does is wherever your focus point, which I have it in the middle right there, it'll give me the alignment on the bottom here. So there we go. Now I can start spot checking everything. Got a nice footing right there. You can see where they're at. I got a cut of 390. Over here, I can check this alignment right down in the middle. Boom, I'm good to go. I can start digging. I've got cut fill until I run off that surface. If you wanted to go wider than four feet, you can't. You can, <clears throat> but you also can turn off these points if they're annoying by going into the layers option at the top here and turning off points just so they're not in your way. There you go, got a really nice clean footing. I built that with the data collector, exported to the machine. And I got a cut of 380, and if I needed to change for a step, I could just change the offset inside the machine there. So thank you for watching this video from Site Tech Inner Mountain on using SiteWorks to record points on the, in the field and export it to the Earthworks machine and make an infield design out of it.